So two interesting pull requests that I've had in mind for quite a while are both simultaneously coming to fruition and I have some changes I need to make. So we're going to make the changes and hopefully things will work. That's the plan. Um, so let's start with Lee Shogi. Here I had proposed November 19th and then later edited this to give a more thorough explanation um, because my initial explanation was not very good. But November that um, there are several concerns. Um, one was that when I was playing on the website and I was playing a fast game, as my time would run low, I would get the time warning ding ding notification very late in the game. And for Shogi in particular, that's a challenge. With chess, trading pieces uh, tends to expedite the conclusion of the game. With Shogi, trading pieces does not simplify things at all. So I adjusted the thinking time um, or the... anyway, we'll look at it. Um, so I'm sorry, I'd adjusted the warnings, but also I had made some changes for thinking time in general, because uh, Shogi, because trading pieces does not simplify the game, you can't just fling your pieces across the board and hope that something's going to happen. Um, you really need a lot more time to play Shogi than you do to play chess. It's just the nature of the game. So I've changed up the time controls and simplified a lot of things and tried to do all this in super invasive stuff without breaking anything. And the maintainer correctly notes, yeah, I, I might have broken one little thing here or there. I probably need to get in this code and fix it. But otherwise, they do like what I'm submitting here. Uh, we'll take a look. We'll take a look. Um, so, uh, before we dive too deep into the code, um, we'll first note what my errors were. Uh, this actually isn't an error. This is me just renaming Super Blitz to Hyper Blitz so that there's such a thing as Bullet and Hyper Bullet. There's such a thing as Blitz and Super Blitz, or Hyper Blitz. Uh, I think this will help people not be terribly confused, particularly non-English speakers, although there are Japanese transliterations, but come on, we're, these, there's Japanese translations. These translations should be based on something a little bit more literal. Um, previously, Lee Chess had also created a thing called Hypo Bullet, which means longer than bullet, and it was just super confusing. I'm proposing let's not have that confusion on Lee Shogi. And that was cool. But um, yeah, in terms of breaking stuff, I had actually removed uh, the ability to do 15 second and 45 second um, times. And uh, the maintainer notes, you know, some games have already been played at these time controls. Let's please keep this. I'm like, uh, okay, fine. We can keep it. That's okay. Whatever, nobody's going to use it, but it, we can keep it and ditto here. Um, but yeah, otherwise, um, all my code changes are fine. And so let's take a look through all the code changes as a whole. Um, let me check just that I have the correct crop of this display. There is one crop I like to use when I'm using this site so that it's easier to read the site. So... Um, I'd created an issue, oh, I'm sorry, somebody had created an issue that it'd be nice to run tournaments um, when people in Japan are awake, and I noted that and fixed it. Um, but also, yeah, we'll look at all my other changes, so part of my motivation for fixing this is I was in the tournament manager code already reclassifying tournaments and changing their durations and such and so I might as well change the schedule of the tournaments to make a little bit more sense. Um, so yeah as I previously mentioned 
So now we're looking at the list of all the files I've changed here. I've changed 10 files. One of them is the tournament helper. Uh, has a reference to Hyper Blitz tournaments. I explain that there might be some existing tournament data. You might need to do some data conversion to get this particular code change to work using the word Hyper Blitz instead of Super Blitz. That's just a MongoDB change in data that can be managed uh, for historic tournaments that will no longer be created. Um, although this really has much more to do with the name of the tournament than uh, the category. Um, yeah, ditto for the leaderboard, just renamed Super Blitz to Hyper Blitz. Um, we'll come back to this chess clock in a second because that's exciting. Um, we're trying to keep my things logically together. We'll come back to this in a second, too. I'm just trying to see, okay, yeah, here I changed the tournament schedule to reference Hyper Blitz and Hyper Rapid. Um, so there's a Rapid, Hyper Rapid, Blitz, Hyper Blitz, Bullet, Hyper Bullet, etc. Uh, so uh, there's no Hyper Classical because that's Rapid. Rapid is the faster version of classical. Hyper Rapid is the faster version of Rapid. So that's just how that works. Uh, if you really care about the numbers of how long each tournament runs, you could look at all my little dumb changes to scheduling new tournaments. Um, I'm not going to cover that right now. It's all on GitHub. Uh, just trust me, it makes more sense, and if you have questions, I mean, the maintainer doesn't, I don't, I want to see it play out. If there are problems, we can fix it later, but I'm very confident I got this right. Um, yeah, and then the tournament scheduler didn't need, like, references to Halloween and all this other complication stuff that... Uh, the maintainer had already removed the other code that referenced these constants, so now I can remove the constants. Um, uh, we can always add code back. This is all in source control. Um, yeah, changed up the schedule a little bit. Again, trying to schedule uh, slower tournaments. Hyper Rapid is a bit slower than Blitz, etc. So... Instead of like having what Lee Chess has, where there's this addiction to bullet and blitz, I'm trying to wean things back a little bit and schedule more tournaments at hours that are friendly for people around the world. Um, so if you really want to dig into all the tournament code, there's just a lot of code. You really don't, trust me. Um, but I've been in this code before with Lee Chess, made a few fun little patches along the way across the years, and Lee Chess has maintained the tournament manager. I just submitted my ideas, and they, uh, in some cases, Lee Chess accepted my ideas and improved upon them, so that's good. So, okay, I've covered, I've talked about the tournament manager, I've talked about how I've changed these category names a little bit. Um, let's start to dig into all the other stuff that's going on here. Yeah. Um, so one thing, the TV page, the TV API. Um, so you can have plugins or widgets. I'm sorry, no, you can't. Um, I'm not actually sure if there is a TV API. I don't think there is. There might be a uh, TV interface, but I don't know that there's a documented public API for the TV. Uh, that said, like here, I've got this little widget. It's a TV, um, but I don't know that the interface it uses is actually um, using a well-documented, supported, official API. Now, this project's in beta anyway, but in terms of Lee Chess, I'm not sure if there's a TV API. I'd have to read the API page to see what's exactly offered, but this is the back end to support the TV. So there's some logic here that says we're going to rotate the TV. If a player doesn't move fast enough, we're going to go find a different game. I said, hang on, let's not 
wait 35 seconds for a move. Let's wait 40 seconds to see if the player moves. Probably this isn't the right value. Probably this should be increased further, but I'm just pointing out to the maintainer, hey, by the way, if we want to have the TV shuffle less, this is a way to have the TV shuffle less often. Um, let's see. What's this channel? Anyway, I'd, oh, this is Blitz, and I don't know. A couple of these channels had this idea. A oh, bullet, Blitz, whatever. Or, uh, yeah. For Ultra Bullet, we're going to wait 30 seconds for a move instead of 20. So just don't shuffle the game immediately. Give it a little more time. Shogi's complicated. Um, so that's the TV code. We've looked at that. We've skimmed over um, some tournament and winners and all this tournament code. We've skimmed over this. I've mentioned that I've changed up the schedule and the numbers a bit. I'd like to see it play in action. Um, and if there are problems, we can fix the problems once we understand what they are, but I'm pretty certain I got this right anyway. Anybody can run their own copy of this code base. They could check out my code and run it. This could be tested by anyone who really cares to test it. I did run it on my local instance and saw that tournaments were getting scheduled and I was satisfied, but other people might not be. Um, all right, I'm going to have to revert all these clock-related changes. I was trying to get rid of 15-second uh, and 45-second increment, or 15 and 45 Bioyomi, because, well, it's just more complication than we require. But some players might enjoy playing 15-second Bioyomi or 15-second increment, so... And games have been played in the past, so let's keep... I'm going to revert my changes to binary binaryformat.scala. Um, I'm going to also revert my changes to clock.scala uh, as pertains to that, uh, this 15 and 45 second concept. Um, uh, does that cover all the 15 and 45 stuff? Let's see... Uh, we've talked about this tournament helper. Okay, so now we just have um, clock, and we have speed, and I mentioned I'm going to revert this binary format thing. Um, let's talk about the remainder. Well, no, let's talk about this next, speed. This will help us understand my clock changes a little bit. Not really, but let's pretend it will. Um, so, um, yeah, once I had gotten into this, once I had started looking at some code um, in terms of trying to trigger the warning correctly or earlier so that players don't run out of time as much, it also had dawned on me that Shogi is just a more complex game and requires more thinking time than chess does. Um, whether it's more complex or not, more thinking time is required. So I specified that Ultra Bullet is now going to be all games under one minute estimation and thinking time. We'll take a look at the estimation formula. It's in clock.scala. I have modified it. But for games that we estimate to take under a minute, under a minute is considered Ultra Bullet, which is insanely fast. Um, for games under five minutes, very fast. For Blitz games, five to 15 minutes, uh, not including 15 minutes. I have a typo. <laughs> oh, this is why we do code review. Oh, this is, wait, what have I done? Oh my god. <laughs> Uh, this is why we do code review. Yeah, you can catch fun little things during code review. Um, there's a saying that by explaining your code to a duck or to any inanimate object on your desk, just by the act of explaining what you're doing, you will think of things. Hello, sir. Yeah. Yeah, that should be... 
up to 1,499 seconds would be considered blitz. And from 4,499 seconds downward would be uh, rapid. And from 4,500, upward, that would be considered classical. All right. <sighs> uh, we'll fix that in a second. Yeah, the maintainer and I both missed this important detail. Uh, we'll get to that, sorry. Um, I only say we'll get to that because I've been working on this for months, and we're going to see it through. And then I've been working on another thing for years, and we're going to see that through, and then maybe we'll get to your subject. It is interesting. I'm very excited about it. But we're going to get through this. Sorry. Um, yeah, I hate to do that only, but I need to keep focused. Um, so yeah, my intuition here is that Shogi takes more time to play. Um, I changed up the Go Berserk penalty. Uh, I don't remember why. This is bad that I don't remember. Um... So, oh, this is saying that if your initial time of the clock is um, under 60 seconds, then there is no penalty for going berserk. Otherwise, take the clock time and divide it by two. So if you go berserk with under a minute, on your initial clock that I don't know that it does anything um, so because I changed the definition of ultra bullet to include up to 59 seconds I changed the definition of berserk to also include up to 59 seconds uh, to have no penalty I don't remember exactly yeah sorry I don't remember everything about this um, so then the initial time on the clock, um, is this more berserk stuff here? No. What is this? I mean, yes, the 300 increased to 500 down here. Wait, there's not a 300 down here. Um, oh, this is the time to make your first move, I think. I don't remember. Okay, yes, this is, if you're playing Shogi with a time control with zero initial time, you don't start the clock actually with zero initial time. Five is probably not generous enough, but we will try it out five seconds. So if you, you say you're going to play a game with a 15 second increment and no time initially on the clock, we're going to actually give you five seconds to make your first move anyway. Um, ditto for Yoyomi and such. So that's what this is about, is... You're going to need more than three seconds to execute your first move. On Lee Chess, your initial time is three seconds, which is enough for chess. Um, yeah, so we've tried to explain the Berserk penalty and the initial time for zero uh, clock. Um, oh, I'd introduced a concept. Why did I introduce this? So there are... I don't know. On Lee Chess, you can find that you could start a clock. You could say, I want to play a game and have the clock time initially be set to, uh, to zero, to a quarter minute, to a half a minute, to three quarters of a minute, um, to one minute, to one and a half minutes. Or you could also set the time to any number of minutes, one, two, three, four, five, etc. For Shogi, I was thinking, you know, it, 
might not be a bad idea to have something for two and a half minutes since I was considering getting rid of 15 second and 45 second. But uh, since we're going to keep this code, I'm going to also revert and remove this two and a half minute concept. You will not be able to start a game by having two and a half minutes on the clock initially. You have to select either two or three. Uh, that's fine. Um, all right, and then the rest of this. Um, so and this, uh, okay, we'll have to explain estimate total seconds. I added a comment here. Estimate 90 moves per player per game. So this is how we estimate how long it's going to take to play a game. Um, so we're estimating a total number of moves of 180. So per player, the time per player is 90 times the... I'm sorry, we take our initial time on the clock. So if you say I'm going to play a one minute game with no increment, no biomi, no nothing, this is going to just say, okay, um, we're going to estimate that the game will take one minute per player. If you say I'm going to play a game with zero initial time and uh, some one minute increment per move, we're going to say, okay, the estimated time is going to be zero initially plus uh, 90 times the number of estimated moves or number of estimated moves, 90 times the one minute increment. So we're going to estimate this at um, um, well, so increment seconds here would be 60. So we're talking about 90 minutes per player if you're doing a one minute increment. So that, yeah, I've in increased the estimated number of moves per player from 40 to 90. Um, And this term of periods in Bioyomi seconds had previously been added by the maintainer. I'm going to leave it be and trust their judgment. Um, but yeah, I guess somehow 25 makes sense. Sure, whatever. If, it's, if it doesn't make sense, we could always change to 25 later. I just know 40 here times the increment does not make sense. And if you play with a one minute increment, you will be playing a game that takes uh, potentially three hours to complete. So yeah, exercise your best judgment. But this is the estimated number of seconds per player. Um, and then somehow this factors into... Um, oh no, we take the initial clock time. That's what this is, the initial clock time and divide it not by 8, but by 6. So this will trigger slightly earlier, um, somewhere between... Wait, why am I leaving this here? I should probably increase that term. Um, unleash us, you don't get the... Er, you don't get the time trouble warning until you're this deep in. Probably on Lee Shogi, I should allow uh, time warnings to occur with one and a half minutes remaining instead of one minute remaining. Yeah, we're going to fix that. Um, no, I do not develop the Lee Chess app. You can f you search GitHub for the word Lee Chobile. It's like mobile with like Lee Chess in front, L-I-C-H-O-B-I-L-E. And you can figure out what's going on with that project. And if you have questions, I guess, ask in the Lee Chess Discord, but you're probably not getting an answer. Um, but yeah, uh, that's why some other stream this morning, they were asking, is there going to be news about a Lee, uh, Lee Shogi mobile app? And I stopped short of saying hell no. 
that there's never going to be any news, but because um, that's not exactly true. But um, it's all open source, so anybody has the power to change it. It's just who's going to do it. All right, so let's get a crack in making the code changes um, that we were talking about. Uh, Get, let's see, get merge origin master. All right, those changes have been merged in. They did not touch any of the files that I've touched. So I guess let's start with clock.scala. I don't know if the paste button, like what this actually copies, I'm just going to select the text and uh, edit it this way. So first thing we noted is that this emergency number of seconds we're going to allow to trigger at 90 seconds. Uh, and add a comment trying to explain this. Uh, trigger... no, activate. Uh, and that actually fits within 80 characters. Impressive. Um, that's fine. So, the next bug we had noted... I'm sorry, the next thing we had noted is that I wanted to put back the case 15 and case 45 here. Uh, and I just don't have that, this potential, this special character for the one quarter or three quarter UTF-8 mapped character um, readily available, so I'm just copying this straight out of GitHub. Uh, remove the extra thing that we don't need. The berserk penalty is probably fine. Um, this is fine. Although I didn't explain what init time here is. Initial time if limit seconds is equal to zero. Uh, now, actually, the variable name is strong enough, and I can't explain this in one sentence, so we're just going to have the code explain the meaning of the code, which is not super great, but it's not bad. All right, and then we're going to go into speed.scala. And I noted here, this should be 1499. This should be not 1500, but much slower, 4500 seconds. Uh, 4500 divided by 60. Yeah, 75 minutes or slower. 75 or slower. Including increment or bioyomi. Okay, let me think. We just looked at this formula a second ago. Let's see it. Okay, yeah, that does capture correctly. That's good. We just looked at this formula a second ago here, where we said we're going to take bioyomi seconds times the number of periods times 25 seconds. So say I were to play a one hour game with uh, one minute or 60 second Byoyomi. Um, our estimated number of seconds, or really estimated number of minutes, would be based upon the one hour plus 25 moves times my one minute Byoyomi. 
Um, we'll just keep things simple for now. Uh, so in that case, we are estimating 85 minutes per player. Um, is that correct? Does experience bear that out? Maybe. Um, what I'm trying to figure out is when I choose to redefine these categories, what should the upper bound for rapid be? Should this upper bound be 75, wait, 45 minutes? Um, I am terrible at math. 45 times 60. This is what I tried to do. 2700. Okay, well, we caught that. 2700. So, yeah, explaining things, code review helps. It really should be a social activity. Anybody care to check my math? 1500 is not correct either. <laughs> oh no, I'm so bad at math. All right. 2700 divided by 3 is simply 900. Oh my god. Well, we caught this before it all deployed. There's no way that the maintainer could ever do my math if I can't do it. Um, how about that? The English explanations have not changed at all. Um, games of at least 45 minutes. All right, well, let me just check. No, that's fine. Upper bound was always 21599. Yeah. Okay, so that was the first thing. Let's look at the web page again in case I can remember all the other things I promised I was going to fix. Oh, binary format. Okay. There's nothing else in this file, right? Yeah, that's it. Um, I vowed that I would... Oh, just check out what's an origin master, really. Um... So to revert all my changes, git checkout origin slash master to get this file. All right, git status, git add modules, git status, there we go. There's all my changes. Uh, was there anything else I needed to revert or considered reverting? I don't think so. I think that was it. Um, Probably need to sanity check all this stuff again. Time is less than 3600 rapid. 3600 would be one hour. Um, yeah, that's not right. That doesn't match up with what I just coded in speed. Here in speed, 3600 is not the upper bound of rapid. 2700 is the upper bound for rapid. Um, so we need to take a look at schedule.scala. Um, there we go. Now, wait a second. This <laughs> this from clock does not belong in this file at all. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, I'm sure uh, the Lee Chess developers would love to know <laughs> that this gem has been hiding in the tournament module. You know... I don't know where this belongs. One could argue it belongs in clock.scala. One could argue that it belongs in speed.scala. 
but does it really belong in schedule.scala? I don't think so. <laughs> okay. So what this is resulting in is me having to cross-reference the other file to remember its contents to make sure I don't code a bug into here. What the fuck? This is this is uh, this is extraordinary. I mean, this uh, for all the things Lee Chess does right, it is damn funny when we find something that's just architected like this. There are valid reasons to do this, but it does not help with code maintenance. Oh my god! So. Just for reference, just for now, I'm going to stick all this code here. All right, under 60 seconds, ultra bullet. Under 200, uh, under 180, hyper bullet. 300 is the bullet upper bound. Blitz ends at 899, so if it's under 900, that'd be blitz. Um... That's more like it. Okay. Oh, God. So now I have to go look at all that stuff we said we didn't... No, I have to look at Blitz and Hyper Rapid and Rapid that I scheduled in here and see oh, how much time I allotted to each Blitz and Rapid and Hyper Rapid. Uh, so let's look at all the fun stuff we scheduled. Um, so somewhere in here we're going to have the word rapid, like here. Okay, what duration? So this is the number of minutes of the tournament. Not the number of minutes on the game clock. You can skip that for now. All right. Uh, this returns the clock time for a tournament. Five minute blitz. Eight minute hyper rapid. 15 minute rapid. 30 minute classical. That's not classical, right? I just defined classical to be 45 minutes per player. Here, I've got 30 minutes with 10 whatevers. Uh, so now I have to look at what the, this 10 here is for. I think the 10 is increment. I think this 10 is increment. So if I'm estimating 90 moves per player, then 10 seconds times 90 is 900 divided by 60 seconds, or uh, 60 seconds per minute with 900 would resolve in 90 divided by 6. 30 divided by 2 is 15 minutes. So, yeah, this 30 minute initial time plus 10 second increment would result in a game estimated to take 45 minutes per player. 45 minutes per player is the fastest a classical time control game can be. Okay, so I. Yeah, when I was planning this, I did have some method to my madness. Okay, yeah, these times are fine. Um, did I do anything else stupid with Rapid? This talks about what days and times and conditions under which should we schedule the tournament, but no, all the clock times are managed in one section we were just looking at. Um, so... Yeah, wait. 
Oh, and then we have the elite time controls. Um, isn't this last element of TC supposed to be what kind of is it's blitz or ultra bullet or rapid or something? Let me see where we use TC again. No, I don't remember what the last element's supposed to be. All right, so these are generic time controls here. Shield tournaments. Um. <laughs> All right, let me consider. I want to take a look and see what I've changed on this ZH Elite TC which is never going to matter because we're never scheduling crazy house tournaments. Um, but more importantly, consider... Uh, I'm so confused. Oh, this shield thing is the one I want to be concerned about at the moment. Oh! No, if variant.exotic. I don't think Shogi is considered an exotic variant on Lee Shogi. So this the contents of this line don't matter. I'm going to ignore that for now. Alright, so I think I've made all the changes that I said I was going to make. Um Again, if anyone wants to proofread anything I've done before this uh, gets merged and gets to be part of the main site, we can find all this. Um, uh, fix time controls and apply code review. Uh, uh, reintroduce 15 second TCs and fix speeds. Um, speed classifier. All right. Uh, get push. All right, so how do we test this is the real question at this point. Uh, we're going to check out master, uh, git pull master. Now, if I remember right, I have a build script that tries to help me do this stuff. Um, yeah, this will pull all the applicable changes, build them all together. Um, uh, And yeah, let's build everything. And um, I suppose while the world is building, um, I don't know how long exactly this will take, but while the world builds, uh, I could start to talk about the Lee Chess code change that I believe I've referenced in the past, but might not have produced any video recording of. Um, on Lee Chess, um, there's the notion that the first player wins more than 50% of the time, more than 51% of the time. And so I produced a patch to account for that. However, at the time I was trying to test said patch, um, I had problems testing it because uh, Lee Chess has lots of dependencies, and my machine that I used for development was not in the best possible state. So since Lee Chess has helped me resolve MongoDB, problems I had inflicted on myself, I guess. Um, and also helped me index uh, documents which required new indices. 
Um, also help me configure the new parameter for passwords for databases that appears in the Leech's config file, um, which I guess is new in the last year or something. I'm not sure, but now there's yet one more layer of security um, with regard to passwords. So there were quite a few layers already. There's another layer and it's a good thing. Um, it's just a lot to remember to set up correctly. So I think I've vamped on that long enough. Um, so, oh, right. While that's going, I can also refresh this perspective. Uh, we could see my latest pull request. I've changed nine files and can look at all the changes here. And it will look identical to what we were just looking at in the terminal. It's not... Um, oh, there was one thing. What was it? Oh, I changed this like I said I was going to. That was the one thing, right? I think it was. I don't think there was anything else in here I intended to change right now. Experimentation will bear out whether future changes are worth it. Um, and by that I mean people actually playing games or testers running tests or whatever. Uh, um, possibly at some point this berserkable thing may need to account for do we have Yoyomi? If we have Bioyomi going berserk, just no, no, let's not let that happen. No, that's just going to complicate everything. Um, I don't know if that, how this is all coded. If you select a Bioyomi time control and you try to go berserk, that would not make sense to me. Um, so, uh, yeah. Hmm. Hang on. Let me think about this. Um, the definition of berserk a bowl is do I have no increment? And no, or if I have a no increment, do I have some base time? Uh, whatever, it's breaking my brain to think about it. Really, we'll need to write a test first, and I don't feel like writing one. And the code probably works. Uh, there's our 899, 2699, 2700, sir, that we were all talking about. Um, yeah, it helps doing this when I'm awake and have had sustenance and can actually think about numbers and explain them to an audience who can challenge my thinking. Um, yeah, I think all the rest of this is probably fine. It's just a lot of a lot of code. Maybe I was a bit harsh on the maintainer for asking to review this much. There's a lot to review. Um, and he's already doing a lot of great work with the site. It's just this feature in particular is something, I don't know, perhaps I care way too strongly about. So, uh, has my code built yet? Nope. <laughs> this is the other consideration, is if he were to check out my code, he'd have to go through this too. He probably has a better, more powerful machine than I do that compiles things faster, or you could just leave it running in the background and check it out in the morning, compile it all day, look at the results in the evening, sort of thing. I'm joking, this doesn't take that long to compile, especially if you do regular updates and regularly compile things, it's pretty fast. It's just in this edge case where you're, where I'm taking my changes plus the maintainer's changes, putting them all together, and trying to compile that, that this takes a while. 
and yeah, there's a lot of compiler warnings because uh, Lee Shogi does not support chess variants. Like, anti-chess is not supported. Right? That's okay. Or the anti-chess is not even... That, that code is not in use. So. Um, checks. What does checks here mean? Oh, this is interesting. So the CI pipeline did kick off using Java 14. I forget if I need to have Java 14 installed to verify my own code changes beyond just verifying that they build. But yeah, what I've been locally trying to verify is can I build my changes? Not necessarily can I run them all because I think I'm going to have Java versioning issues because I had to reinstall a different Java version for the Lee chess changes that I'm working on. So, but yeah, at least on the website here on GitHub, um, the pull request CI build passed far faster than it did on my machine. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm probably between switching things up with MongoDB and Java versions and code versions. Uh, doesn't surprise me that this takes so long to compile. Um, so since I am blocked, I'll finally digress into your question. I apologize for the delay, although it seems you've left, but um, yeah. Uh, the Leeches app, um, yeah, there's one, I think there's just one primary developer for the Leeches mobile app. And they are extremely busy and um, they do still somehow manage to make time to uh, make changes when Leechess requires those changes to be made to the mobile app. But we keep pointing out that the website experience is quite good um, in just a normal browser. You really don't need a mobile app to use Leechess. I suspect similar is true for Lee Shogi, that the site just works on whatever web browser you're trying to use. Um, or if not, I don't know. I would expect at least Lee Chess would support several mobile browsers. Um, at some point that did require uh, cutting back on support for Internet Explorer which was holding everything else back. I don't remember all the details, but there's just so much code that you have to use to support like IE4 or 7 or whatever it was. Um, so yeah, uh, getting into the web 2.0 era um, allowed us to support more browsers. Man, this is taking a while. Could this please... I could understand that running the code might take a while. Uh, at some point, I had aspired and failed and tried again and failed and tried a third time and again failed to install a language server that would automatically compile changes in the background. Um... I tried this for Lee Chess. I tried this for Lee Shogi. I need to try it again sometime this year. Because um, I want to spend more time doing stuff with Lee Chess and Lee Shogi. Um, it, <laughs> in both cases, because maintainers are glad to collaborate with me, I am glad to collaborate with them. Um, yeah, it's... A delight collaborating with folks who are responsive and supportive. Um, I know that might contradict some earlier statements I made about like 
could you please review this? Could you please review this? Could and I get it. I was just asking a question. I asked quite insistently for <laughs> quite a few times, uh, and I was a bit upset about it, but um, the uh, still asking, could you please review this or at least tell me what's up? And they they have responded, and to my astonishment, they've actually gotten through code review and provided feedback, which is far better than I expected. Um, I had expected, okay, yes, uh, thanks for uh, creating this pull request, but it's too much, I can't review it, sort of thing. Um, yeah, something more like that is what I expected was, okay, in, in spirit, I like what uh, the I am maintainer, like what you, me, submitted here, um, but um, no, they actually did the code review. Uh, that said, like, all the random numbers that are in the code base right now, uh, they make sense for Lee Chess, they don't make sense for Lee Shogi, and almost all the numbers that I edited here have no long-term consequences. There's only very few that have any long-term significance that aren't just part of how we're going to render the site um, or how we're going to render a particular instance of a tournament. It's only really in clock.scala that we're talking about something that has an impact on stored data that cannot be recomputed easily or trivially. Uh, I think everything aside from my changes to clock.scala uh, is pretty straightforward. And oh, I'm sorry, no, there is one exception tournament helper, like this super blitz, hyper blitz thing that is breaking data. Uh, my clock change will result in differently stored data. That somebody viewing a game will see here's the clock and here's how much time was remaining and such and that won't exactly completely match up with the way that a running game currently functions where uh did i actually change anything that takes effect during a game other than the alert here's the alert um okay here's the game estimated total number of seconds but that has no functional bearing on anything that gets stored to the database this is just an estimation that's used uh, to determine uh, what what was this used for. Um, I thought one thing it was used for is determining if you could go berserk or not, but that's not used here. Um, I thought it was used to determine when to present the low time warning, but it's not used for that either. Um, I don't recall exactly what this estimated time is for. No, it's used to determine the speed, the game category. This is just how we present the game back if it, we consider it. No, I'm sorry, this is more than presentation. This is when we store the game in the database. Do we store it with a one for bullet, two for blitz, etc.? So we're going to store some sort of indicator on the game that said, based on the clock of the game, this is the category that the game is in. So this actually recategorizes games. So this says that the next time I store a game to the database, um, just do the computation slightly differently to determine if this was actually ultra bullet, even though it was a 59 second game or something like that. Um, so, yeah, now more games will be stored as being ultra bullet, stored as being bullet or classified this way for new games added to the database. Existing games already in the database that already fell within this bullet classification or within this blitz classification, etc., will still be classified that way. So you'll still be able to find old games that, in my opinion, were misclassified, but nobody cares 
Um, if somebody did care, we could actually update these indices in the database to reclassify old games, but nobody cares. I'm just saying when we go forward rating new games, um, yeah, we're going to make sure that players have enough time to think as part of playing a game. And the appropriate rating category on the player's profile will be updated. That's what we're saying. Uh, is this built yet? Thank God. Um, so that was the master branch. That all compiled. I've terminated the server after 14 minutes of build time. Not a bad rant. So that's the master branch that compiled. Um, come on. Really? Please give me control. Please terminate the server. How many times do I have to control C this? Okay, there we go. I only had to do it once. I hit enter a few times, but I only control C'd once. If I did control C multiple times, that would cost it to come down faster, I think. Um, so we're going to push this branch, the master branch, to my copy of the GitHub repo. Not because I have to, but just so I can keep track of where I'm at, um, both locally and remotely. I've got copies of the entire repository this time. And now we're going to... Okay, how do we run this thing again? Uh, Leela run? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I remember changing the ASCII art for this. They used to say leechess.org in the console. That was clearly my most memorable change. Yeah. And then somebody came in and changed this to put, like, uh, shogi piece. <laughs> oh man, some of my early code contributions are really going the distance. All right, so this will probably take like five minutes to start up and schedule some tournaments and such. So I'm running Java 11 locally. For whatever reason, I had some success running one of my projects. It might have been, um, might not even have been Lee Chess. It might have been... What's that other Shogi site that I've spent some time contributing to? Um, the one... Oh my gosh. With, like, the opening explorer. The one where we have various timed puzzle challenges. It's not play framework. Play shogi. Yes, play shogi. Uh, might have required me to use Java 11. Oh, man. Um, I'm missing out on Grandmaster US Champion Will Anderson's stream of um, Blitz Champs Round 6. And his competition therein. Um, given how silent our audience is, I might take a break after this Lee Shogi coding. Go watch some Scrabble or uh, watch some OMG words and come back and get to our Lee Chess development afterward. Um, yeah, I didn't expect deploying this would take so long. Because my code changes are to very few files. I don't know why it's necessary to recompile the entire world here. Just because I've changed nine files, you've got to recompile two Scala sources and 51 Scala sources and this and that and the other. There's something I'm not understanding about the how this compiles. And I, for whatever reason, I think Lee Chess functions better in that I, if I create a branch and I make code changes, those uh, don't re require recompiling all the other modules. 
So maybe there's a rogue SBT clean or Maven clean or some kind of clean somewhere in this that I should just remove for my own development here. Uh, Grandmaster Will Anderson. Um, his uh, Twitch username is Wanderer15. Not Wanderer12, who maintains our uh, Lee Shogi codebase. Wanderer15. There are two different Wanderers. Uh, that are both active in the community of open source board game development and community development. Um, I was surprised, but uh, yeah. Uh, so I believe it was the 2014, I don't remember, sometime in the last decade he was the U.S. champion for Scrabble. So to reach that pinnacle of achievement, you've got to practice your brains out. You've got to study words a lot. Um, and yeah, it just requires a lot of dedication, study, and effort. Um, I feel, uh, given my participation in that game so far, it seems that there is a much steeper learning curve, that it will take a long time of much practice to see any results um, in a competitive setting. But I could be biased. Uh, but yeah, for competitive like OMG words or the branded similar game Scrabble, um, I think that um, you just need to know a lot of words and be able to recall them pretty quickly. And also have to demonstrate actual street smarts of how you uh, play the game. Alright, we are attempting to load um, my instance of the website. So, here we go. Compiling to Scala sources. For some reason, after the application is launched, contacting the website in a browser causes more compiling to occur, or compilation to occur. The stuff gets built as needed. And I'm... Wait, that 251, 217, 14 looks familiar. How often do we have to rebuild the universe? That's amazing. There's almost certainly a rogue clean step somewhere. But, um, yeah, give it another four minutes or so and it'll probably show up. It's not like my machine that I'm compiling on here. This is not strained for resources. Um, the same way, like, I have a bot that's deployed up in the cloud where I can just ask for a random seven-letter word. That bot is on a machine that is constrained, uh, both in, well, really every respect. It's got, like, one gig of RAM and or one megabyte of RAM I don't remember it's got one something of RAM it's got 10 gigs of no it's got limited disk space limited RAM one CPU one core and it's serving the relay chess website it's serving my word bot and it's also serving um, my Lee Chess bot. Um, it's also serving uh, or running, um, uh, what's it called? Phantom Bot, the one that moderates this Twitch channel. 
Possibly it's also running other bots which help moderate my Discord. I don't remember. But I got one machine that basically runs all the bots, um, one CPU, um, with one core. Very limited memory, limited disk space. And it just sits up there in the cloud and does its thing and... Uh, yeah. Someday it'll become sentient and kill us all, but it's okay. Uh, it's a joke. But yeah, it's amazing how much you can get done on one machine. Try to reload the page soon to see if it's getting better. Leechess.org timeout. Hmm. Oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Do I really have to reconfigure... Um... Uh, it's possible I might have misconfigured Engine X ability to connect to this instance of a web server instead of the other Lee Chess web server. I don't think it should care one way or the other as long as a project is running on the correct port number uh, or connecting through the correct port. I don't think it should care what the site name is. Yeah, there we go. All right, well, that was concerning. So we can select Japanese. We can look at notifications. Hey, my streamer page is public. All right, and we are reconnecting because my socket server is broken. Uh, I don't care about my socket server at the moment. I just want to know if I go look at tournaments. And I like scroll left and right a bit. Show me a tournament. Build me a tournament, please. Tournament get. So we can see in our console. Oh. Whoops. I hit the enter key. Hitting enter key was a bad idea there. Hitting the enter key was a very bad idea. I don't know why, like with Lee Chess hitting the enter key, we'll just page the terminal. Uh, regardless, I'll test this later. Um, last time I tested my code changes, I was able to see a full tournament schedule on this page. I don't know what's up right now. Um, hitting the enter key should not have broken it the way it did, but... Maybe that's just how this particular thing runs. <sighs> All right, I'm going to declare success. Check out my code if you have questions. This developer, in their infinite grace, will um, also check out my code, and it will work. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to respond here. Uh, many thanks for your consideration. I understand software is complicated and am very grateful for your help and consideration. Thanks. Uh, yeah, th this went much better than I expected. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I'm trying to keep things as upbeat and positive and everything as possible because earlier I was extremely frustrated. And just saying, please, please take a look. We've taken a look. Okay. Um, I've actually executed my code. The code runs. The ser oh, the server's back online. Can I please get a tournament schedule? So I could just know if my tournament code works at all. That would be great. But yeah, um, the fact that they actually got through the code review is astounding to me. And I got critical feedback on the parts, and we all here reviewed this together, and it looks fine to all of us. And he correctly pointed out the only parts that were of concern to him. As we were looking at things together, my math was wrong. I had to fix the math on a couple things. Um, I'm tired. We'll put it that way. Um, 
But no, I actually had a good breakfast. I've been eating reasonably well. Um, yeah, just super tired. Um, hopefully that improves. I have had a chance to talk with folks at work about the dilemma or whatever the concern is. And I think things will work out. Um, I have previously received feedback that I had perhaps, perhaps not been assertive enough. So I am being extremely assertive and people are getting the message that I do actually assert myself. Um, so I haven't yet received feedback that I'm being too assertive, but I suspect that if I continue things, either my feedback will start to be taken seriously or um, I'll get that feedback saying, oh, this is too assertive. We, we can't have you being this assertive. We need less assertion now. Like, okay, whatever. Just tell me what the rules are. We'll play by whatever rules you come up with. Um, it's fine. Yeah. It'll be fine. Anyway. Um, yeah, I think this code works. I don't know what the hell's up here. I should be able to view the tournament schedule. I don't know what's wrong with my... Oh. Wait, when did this get generated? So even though the socket server to service this here failed, I do still have tournaments. But these were not recently generated by my copy of the code. If I try to create a new tournament... Um... Man, every time I try to test something, I find something new. So they recommended tournament time, <laughs> two minutes initial time, is the recommendation. With no Byoyomi is the recommendation, with no increment. Hmm. This is the experience that you get when you're trying to create a new tournament. All right, whatever. We don't need to test that either. I would have liked to see the tournament calendar. That would have solidified my understanding of my own code. Uh, unfortunately, that's not possible. So let's instead see if I go try to create a game. If I set Byoyomi to zero, increment to zero. All right, zero time. This is considered in... This is infinity. If I bump this up a little bit, one quarter. This is considered... Ultra Bullet. Does that actually capture in OBS? Let's go back to this perspective. So one quarter minute is considered Ultra Bullet. Zero, it doesn't have a time category. One half per side is considered Bullet? That's not right. Uh... Okay, if I scale this up to like 15 minutes, that's rapid. Okay, where's classical start? Classical starts at 25 minutes. What's going on here? Does anybody know how this page works? Uh, cause yeah, one half a minute. Oh, oh. 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 That's not it. That's not it. Nope. Nope. Scheduled. Nope. Tournament scheduler. Nope. Shield. Winners. API. TV. There's a thing called game form. Dot Scala. That game form needs to account for the number of notches you take this thing to the right. That's what's going on here. 
So when I ask the rhetorical question, does anybody know how this thing works? Yes, I know how this thing works. God damn it. <laughs> um, no. Uh, one half a minute. I am making a code change that says anything under one minute is now ultra bullet. That is my code change. That's a very large part of the code change. My code change is not working. Um, so we're going to take a look. Let's see. Minutes per side. Modules. All right. This, this is the key here is minutes per side. Um, modules. App. No. What is the... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not looking for a module. I'm looking for app. Yeah, here we are. Minutes per side. This is used in the setup. This is a form element. App views setup? No. Um... Okay, that's not right. Well, maybe it's right. I don't think so. I think I'm looking for game form. There's somewhere, somewhen that, like this little form that has the number of notches, etc. Um, hmm, I guess we'll take a look at bits here. Um, so this element here, render time mode, uh, this is used in forms, great, not really, oh truly. All right, well, somehow, somewhere in here, it's possible to have it render that this is actually... All right, we're going to take a screenshot and say, I don't know how to fix this. Um, Now that I use the word you, uh, oh, where did my image go? Oh my goodness, really? I was trying to paste an image. Oh, that was weird. Can we actually paste the image? All right. There we go. Um... Maybe I should be looking, in, not an app, but inside UI. Somebody knows how this works. Um, it should be ultra bullet because if you trade pieces in Shogi, trading pieces makes the game more complicated. In chess, exchanging pieces makes the game easier. In Shogi, exchanging pieces makes the game more complicated and lasts longer. He, uh, so pieces just constantly re-enter the board. Shogi's just a really complex game. You're welcome to feel what you want. I'm just saying I am very strongly weighing in on my opinion here. And it's going to take very strong evidence to overturn my opinion. It's not that my opinion's right, it's just that I am biased, and I'm a code person. A person who gets to write the code and let my bias be known. 
you're welcome to share your perspective, but um, I don't think you're going to be able to overturn my opinion. I think this code change will be a very good thing for Lee Shogi. Um, we'll see how much players hate it. I think they'll enjoy it. I think they'll enjoy having tournaments that run at reasonable hours with reasonable durations. I think they'll enjoy being able to find opponents and understand what the... Like, some players are better at Blitz, some players are better at Bullet. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm very, very strongly biased based on my perspective. Um... I could do more rigorous analysis, but I really can't be bothered. Um, sorry, that's just how it is. Um, I think players will largely agree. If not, they can certainly take their protests to various fora, and this maintainer will have to deal with the problem that I am causing. Um, but I just don't see it that way. Some people might see it that way. Um, anyway, we figured out what our next little thing to do here is, um, I'm going to break for lunch, so thanks for watching. Have a good day.